Okay guys, so this is part two to part one where I'm going to do a little something different on the front of these. But I did these the same exact way I did um, on part one. But I wanted to show you the colors before I pick them all up. So this is this one here. And this one has Sailboat Blue by Ranger. It has the Pool. And it also has Aqua. Okay. So that's this one here. Now the second one, I didn't go as dark as I did on the other one. Now I still would kind of like to go even darker with this, so I may add some dark. But this one I did the same color, sandal, and I also did the pebble. And I may decide to add some black. I have to think about it a little bit more. But either way, I wanted to show you these colors. Now, this is definitely more of that light vintage what I was going for initially. But I think so you can see what I was intending. I may go darker again. Add some black into it. But I haven't quite decided yet if I want to do that. Now, neither of these, um, are these are just plain clay. I did not add the liquid clay. Now the liquid clay does seem to help it spread a little differently but ultimately when it's resined it doesn't look any different. It doesn't look any different. This one didn't have liquid clay, this one did and, and when they're resin they don't look any different so you know that's up to you if you like the way it spreads or not whether you want to do the liquid clay or not. Um, but either way I wanted to show you these before I did anything with them. I really have to think of what I'm going to put on this. And again, I may darken it. I may add some black onto this just to see if I can achieve the effect I was trying to achieve before. If I can figure out a way to get it to happen. That didn't happen the on the last one. And I'll show you a little bit later what happened. But um, yeah, I may add some black to that. So either way, the colors aren't changing. It's still sandal and pebble but I'm just going to add some black into it. I did end up adding the black and this is what I've kind of achieved here and I actually kind of like the wispiness in it. That's the whole point of this. I think it looks really cool. So once these are done drying I will be back. I have to figure out what I want to put on them. Um, that one I already have an idea. This blue one I have kind of an idea of what I want to put on it but I have to figure out what I want to put on this guy and then I will show you what my idea was. Okay, so let me show you what happened. This was the brown one I did, right? And back here, I put the white stamp on and it kind of sucked up a lot of the under ink. And I should have known that was gonna happen because when I do mixed media and I spray like inks on or different colors and then I gesso on top of it, a lot of times the gesso will pick up the color. But then what I did was I applied resin and I was like, well, I hate the way this looks, right? Of all of these under ones. And then I figured, can I stamp on top of the resin? And that's where this front one came out. And in real life, it's giving it a 3D effect. Like this one is definitely on top of that one. And so if I plan it correctly, I may be able to build layers in the way it looks. So that's what I was going to attempt with this. And I want to see if I can do now. My base layer is, if, unless it's like black, like this, is going to pick up some of the under color. It just will feed through the white if I'm using white. You could emboss in white, and I bet you that wouldn't pick it up. Um, but I actually kind of want, and what I'm thinking, I kind of want it to pick up some of the, you know, and make it, this I think I'm going to go oceany, right? Like under, under a sea theme. So if... It's further away, it's going to be fainter, not as descript, not as hard of, harsh of lines. Things up close are more in focus, right? So the things far away are going to be kind of blurry and stuff. So I'm thinking I have this stamp set here, which is on my U.S. Ambassador, Amazon Ambassador page, and I'll put the link below. I think I'm going to use this one in the background, and then I haven't figured out what I'm going to do in the foreground, but this is like a, this is my only under the water kind of thing I have. Now you could totally build this all in clay, but I'm right in this, these tutorials I'm going for, and this is pretty much an extension of the other one. I just, it was getting long. Um, 
I want the stamp look. I like the stamp look. It's a different look, and it's fun to try different looks. So this is the kind of underwater stuff. Right, and I kind of, if I do this right, now first I need to figure out how I'm going to hang it. Am I going to hang it like this, or am I going to hang it straight on? Maybe I'll hang it this time on a diagonal. Now my other thought was after to do the top of the seahorse, right? Now I need to figure out where he would go best. Because I can plan to go around him. I actually kind of like if those bubbles were almost looking like they were coming out of his mouth. So maybe I will hang it straight. You know, if those little alcohol ink bubbles were coming out of his mouth. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. So then I'll put the tree more over here and maybe a little part of it over here. Okay, okay, I got a plan, I got a plan. Hey, I'm not the best at stamping, so we'll, we'll see if this comes out. So the ink I used yesterday was the stays on opaque white, cotton white, and that's what I'm gonna use again and let it oops, absorb some of the background color up through, okay? That way it's like a nondescript plant in the background. Ooh, before I do that, the first thing I want to do also is tape this piece down. That way it doesn't stick to it or anything. The stamp, because these are new stamps and sometimes they can stick. Okay, so I'm gonna put one maybe here and then one maybe like this. I like to stamp it the opposite way. I like to stamp it like this. We can see. And you know, a stamp effect does not give you like a solid image, you know? it's. Stamps don't do that. I mean, they can do that, but I like the broken kind of image it gives. Yeah, it looks pretty solid right there. Okay. Okay, so I was going to do one. Actually, I don't want it up to all of those bubbles, so let's do it like this. Ready? Ooh, it's so scary when you're going to do it. Try not to smear it. Oh, cool. Okay. And then I'm going to use this half kind of up here. I'm getting better. <laughs> I am getting better. See that? And then this will start to pick up the blue from underneath and give us kind of a neat, a neat look. And it's okay that I didn't get the stem. I could have re-inked it to try to get that, but I like that. Okay, so there's that one. <clears throat> and then we're gonna let this this part dry, okay? The seahorse is gonna go on top of this. So we'll let this dry and then we'll resin that. And that's it for that one. So let me grab a baby wipe. So I don't have to go upstairs and wash the stamp off. I'll just baby wipe it for now. Usually I just, I don't really know how to technically clean them. I know there's cleaners out there for stamps, but I usually just soap and water it upstairs like I would um, a stencil or like I do a silk screen with just some basic soap and water. Okay, so there's that. Now, on the other one, let me move this out of my way and grab another tile. And let's tape the other one down. So I still like the dotted plant I had. Oh, that's my fiance. He was eating lunch, and I need him to go outside and help me with something with our wood for heating our house. And he might be getting up, so I might need to stop to go do some wood. I can't get the wheelbarrow out from where it is. So I still like this stamp, which 
is in this big one here. I still like that. But I also had another one. Yep, he's coming. Sorry, I had to deal with that. So anyway, so I have this stamp that I was using before. I think I'm still going to use that. But I also have in a set, again on my Amazon, I don't know what set. I have these guys. But these are bigger. If you look at them, the circles are bigger, which to me would make it look more in the foreground, right? And this would be in the background. Okay, so this one I may stamp first, then add a layer of resin, then put these guys. But I was also, I got these new stamps that have these little itty bitty bitty butterflies, right? And if a butterfly is going to be way in the background, he's going to be really small. So I was thinking of doing that tall plant, okay, that will get kind of suck up the background. Then I was going to do a little baby butterfly way in the background, very nondescript. And then we'll build forward, okay, with layers of resin. I don't know. I'm playing. We're figuring this out together to see if we can achieve something cool. I don't know. Hey, that's how you find out cool stuff, right? Is by playing and seeing what you can get, what you can achieve. So either way, I know I need to stay up this guy on, this tall guy. And I was thinking instead of putting him in the middle like I did the first time, to kind of put him off-centered a little bit. And then put a butterfly kind of up in here. So either way, let's do him first. I think I'm only going to do one of him. And I'm only going to need some of this. I don't need all of it. getting a little better at stamping. Oh, crap. Yeah, I did tape it down. I was like, I didn't tape it down. I did. I'm way ahead of myself. Okay, let's put him kind of over here. This is hard to do because you only got like one shot at it. Okay. Good, that's okay. So let's wipe him off quickly. And I'll clean these later with soap and water, like I said. It's getting cold here, so I gotta get our wood going. And then I'm gonna put on a little baby butterfly. So I don't want it too small because it might. Yeah, maybe I will though. This one's even smaller, but maybe I'll do this one. Let me get that guy out. These aren't that sticky either. Let me uh, tap it with like a little liquid and see if I can get it to stick. Like a suction cup. Come on, thing, stick. These aren't really, they're not really expensive stamps, so they, some of them are like crazy sticky and other ones are not. That might work enough. I was thinking about putting him maybe way up here. So it looks like he's kind of flying in. <clears throat> how he looks. Hopefully he's not just like a little dot. Okay. Definitely got an outside rim to him, but that's okay. At least it looks like a butterfly, right? Or I hope it does. So see how it's starting to pick up some of the background color? That's what it's doing. So that will be my first layer on these guys. So then I'm going to go do some wood. I'm going to let this dry. Actually, I have to vacuum out our wood shed area in the house where we keep the wood. And so I'll let this dry in the meantime. And then I'm going to apply a layer of resin. 
just a thin, thin layer just to kind of seal off this ink. But I'll coat the whole thing, obviously. I'll coat the whole thing in a really thin layer. I'm not really concerned if it pulls away from the edges or anything. Um, and here's the other one. Again, is picking up some of that blue so it's not as white. You see how pure white the, the butterfly is? Still. Okay. So I'll let them dry and then I'll coat them in a layer of resin. When that's done, I'll come back. And I don't care if I have some distortion for my quick cure resin. We'll deal with that later. Yeah, and that's all I need to do. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay. So they're all resined. See how when the resin went on, it kind of liquefied everything again and it kind of faded that out. Which I think looks cool. And then here's this one again. See how the white picked up the brown? But again, I'm going to use that to my advantage. And now it shouldn't pick anything up because there's a layer of resin. So now whatever color I put on should stay whatever color it is. The other thing is I haven't used yet on top of the resin is the archival inks, the ink pads. So I don't know how these will work. I've only used the stays on so far on top of the resin, which seem to work fine. Now I have white and I have black stays on. So we'll kind of have to see if the uh, archival doesn't work. I can wipe it off the resin and use the black, but I'm thinking I'm going to try to use, I got a set of these guys and I think I put these on my ambassador page as well they're little mini ones this is manganese blue and then I also have cobalt so I'm going to work on my blue one first my C one let me find my stamps here and I do think I'm going to go with this guy hang on my nose is running let me blow it because someone got really upset when my nose was running once Sorry, they made a comment that I shouldn't make videos if my nose is running. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm human. And if I'm going to make this when my nose is running, then you wouldn't have seen it. I wouldn't have remade it afterwards. I don't make projects usually more than once. So I just wouldn't have recorded it and they would have never seen it. So, oh well. If my nose runs, I apologize. I'm human. And I was just outside in the chilliness working on wood and coming inside to a warm house. That's what happens. And you may find that more in the winter because I'm going to get into negative weather soon, most of the winter, and that's the way it's going to be. So I think I'm going to do this seahorse. And like I said, I want his nose where the, like, the bubbles are. I think I'm going to put him like there. But I want to see if the blue will work. And if it's not deep enough, I can add some black. Or I could do blue and black. I could do mostly blue and then tap some black around it. Maybe I'll do that. Let me get, let me, let me actually just use the, since I'm using the archival, let me just use the archival black one and see if it works. And if not, then I'll wipe it off and I'll go to full stays on black. So I think the manganese blue might not be deep enough. But let's blend, right? Let's blend. So this is a manganese. Let's put some of that on there. And I know I'm not going to be able to get the tip of the tail on, but I hope it's still legible enough to know it's a seahorse. Let's put some of the um, cobalt. Now I don't know if this is going to be too water-based. I don't think it's a water-based ink, but I'm not 100% positive. Let's put on some of the black as well. Let's uh, try to go more on the edges. Put some black just to deepen him up a little bit. You can mix your colors. Ooh. Why not? Let's play. Let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy the process of creating, right? Otherwise, 
what's the point? If we don't have fun and we're not enjoying the process, what's the point? Okay, ready? Now again, it's hard because the camera's right in front of my face. But let's see what we get. Do you think he's dark enough? Hmm. I don't think he's dark enough, do you? No, I'm gonna go with black. So then let's, I have a baby wipe here. Let's see if that will take it right off. Ooh, it kind of left a cool misty effect. Okay, let me see if I take, I'm not gonna use 99% alcohol, but maybe a little 70 on that. Because the 99 makes your resin look a little dull. Not that it will really matter much because we're going to put another layer of resin on. Let me just wipe him off because I'm going to go with the stays on. So the archival did seem like it would work because it actually stayed what had dried. So let me grab my archival black. I can open it because I haven't used it yet. Why do they package things so difficultly to get it, make it so difficult to get into? Okay, so this is the archival. Let's try this. I want him to stand out a little more than what I had. But you may have been happy with that. You might say, Katie, what are you doing? It was beautiful. I'm looking for something a little more prominent than that. See, and then in real life, I can tell that that's behind that. I like it. The one thing I didn't get, but I don't think I'll be able to redo this without messing it up, is the tip of the thing behind his head. Like right up there. Behind his head, there's usually a thingy. You see it? I didn't get that. There we go. Oh, I got it. I don't know. What do you think? You could do anything. I'm going to leave that one. Got to stop before it gets, stop while it still looks good. Okay, so there's that one. I'll let that one dry. Let me switch out. Okay, and then on this one, I was going to use these guys. And honestly, they almost look identical, except for one's a reverse of the other. So I would probably put, I want to put one in front. Maybe one here, and then I'm probably going to use both. So let me get one off for now. Get this one. And with this one, I think I'm going to put him over here in front of that. And I'm still going to stick with white on this one. And this one I'm going to use. Oh, actually, this is not stays on. This one's a big archival. Huh. So 
I only have white stays on. Which the archival seems to work too. It's a little liquidier than the stays on. Okay, so let's play with this one too. See what something fun we can achieve with this one. Okay, let's put this one over here. Okay, happy with that. Again, it's a stamped image, so it's not going to be totally solid. Wipe that off. Let me get the other one out. And this one, I think I'm going to go more over here somewhere, maybe a little up higher a little bit. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> and because that one's on top of the other one, and I'll, I'll hold it up in a second, it definitely looks like it's in front of it. Okay with that one too. Now the resin does tint things a little bit. I've tried a diff couple different resins on white and they all kind of do the same exact thing. Um, I actually have a little tester piece here where I, before I did this I wanted to see which one. So I wrote with permanent marker and these are, so I'm using right now this one here. The, Q-I-A-O, Q-I-A-O, which almost exactly reminds me of the Decorum, okay? These, those are quick cure resins, so this is the RJ Crafts, again, a little liquidier, but the color of these are about the same. The Tiny Pandora did smear my ink underneath, and the Lisa Pavelka is a little more tinted but in real life but not like tons so they all kind of take the white and change it a little bit so anyways so I wanted to do that and then I also want to do these are all my, I got things that I'm testing in a container here on pieces that I didn't like I also wanted to put a bigger butterfly on than what I had Maybe one going in the opposite direction. <laughs> no, I don't want one that big. But that one's almost identical. This one's almost identical to that one. Maybe this one? Oh, maybe that one. Maybe that one there. Let's see. If I can get him to stick on. Maybe that guy, like, right here. Yeah. Why not? Let's do it. Right? Let's do it. Let's see what we can come up with. You know, and when I did this the first time, I just saw that if I put the resin on, it gave it this layering effect, and I've seen it in other resin crafts. Not that I watched a tutorial for it in other resin crafts, but um, like when you're scrolling through Facebook, there's always like dog videos and all kinds of things. Well, in this one video I saw a long time ago, it's been a while, they would like, artists would like paint on top of a thin layer of resin. They'd paint like the underbelly of a fish. And then they'd pour a layer. And then they'd paint like the next layer of the fish. And then they'd pour, pour a layer of resin. And then they paint further up and up. And it makes it look really 3D. Or they do it with dragons and stuff. Or flowers. And it looks 3D. So that's where when I did this, I was like, oh, maybe we can kind of achieve that same look. 
And you know what I might do? I might put a layer of resin on this and then we'll put, because it's a little naked here, I'll put that first leaf or that first thing maybe in here somewhere or something. I don't know. You might as well play with it, right? All I can do is say, eh, I don't like that, junk it. But I may come out with something really cool, I don't know. Okay, so, let me close that up. So this is what we have so far. We have this guy. And again, in, in real life, you can definitely see it's on top. So we have this guy here. And then we have this one so far. Okay, so I'll let these dry and then I'll add another layer of resin and then I'll see if I'm done with it or if I want to do something else with it. I don't know. Maybe add another leaf on top of him. Ooh, that might be cool. Add another one of those leaves on top of him a little bit. Oh, that might set him in. Okay, let me let these dry and I'll get some resin on them. Ooh, my mind's going. It's making me excited. Okay, so here we are. They're out of the curing light or the UV light again. So here's this one. And I've got a little bubble there, but I actually think that looks cool in this type of underwater. Any little air bubbles might actually look pretty neat. And then here's this one. Did I just get something on the top of it? Yep. Okay, so I'm thinking on this guy, I'm going to use this thing again. And I'm going to put him right in front of this dude somewhere. Should I put him there? Maybe I'll put it behind him a little bit. Like this. I don't want to cover him up all the way, but kind of like that. Give him a little... I could probably put one down here, but I'm thinking maybe one. Let's do it. Let's just go for it. I'm still using the stays on white. Or I am going to use the stays on white again for this. It's a little distorted from the resin, but that's okay. We'll let it stamp wherever it will stamp. I'm thinking I'm going to put it here maybe a little bit. Ready? Cool. See how it now looks like it's in front of him? See if I can get a little bit more over here. Okay. And I kind of want to put a little bit here. Like that. Oh, I smudged it. That's okay. I wish I had some like little bubbles. I wonder if I can make some bubbles with my little silicone tip. And this plastic cap has some ink on it. I wonder if I can make, I don't have any white alcohol markers. I wonder if I can just make some like white little dots.
right, let's craft. Let's just have fun. This is the whole point of crafting is to see what you what something cool you could come up with. I'm just tapping it in my ink pad. I'm so left brain that I put things really even. I use a lot more of my left brain when I do art. I'm very even, so I have to really pay attention that I don't. Oh, there's a hair. There we go. And you might say, oh, I hate those dots. Don't put those dots on there. But don't put the dots on there if you don't want to. You can put whatever you don't want or whatever you do want on your own. Totally up to you. That's the whole point. Each one of us are going to make something absolutely different. Use white in a second, okay. Just wipe my stamp off here. Oh, it's already drying. I'm gonna have to take that up and get some soap and water on it. Okay. <clears throat> Put that one away. And then with this one, I think I want to do this guy again, but more down here, like the in here. Like maybe like that a little bit. You put a couple dots up here. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what we come up with. I almost might need to pour some ink in my some more ink in my pad. This ink pad, okay, let me show you. This ink pad, when I ordered it, and the only place I could find it on was Etsy, the white stays on ink, and I don't remember who it was through. It came with the ink. So initially, the stamp pad was put nothing on it. It was dry, and you have to apply the ink. So I didn't apply it all because I figured, why not? If I keep it in the bottle, I might be able to add more later. And then it came with this little thing and you just kind of smear it on there. Kind of squeegee it around. I figured it would probably stay moister if I left it in the bottle. Okay, let's see. Where are we going to put this guy? Somewhere in here. Oh, did I smear? No, oh, I didn't. Cool. Because I'm getting the doming effect for my resin, it's 
cutting the edges off. Look at that. Maybe a little bit more right in here. Let's see. Look how cool that is. I wish it showed it on camera how 3D it actually appears in real life. You know, so you can keep layering with as, many, with as many colors as you want, with as many stamps as you want. I mean, obviously don't fill your whole thing up because then you'll lose your effect. But, I mean, I think that's really cool. I mean, like I said, I've seen it in other things, but I've never tried it on resin. And just because I made one mistake, I realized I could do that because I didn't like the first layer on the ink itself on this one. It, I didn't like the way it did. So when I put a layer of resin on, it ate up a lot of the white absorbed the brown and I was like oh that looks horrible well let me try stamping on the resin and then I was like oh that looks so 3d oh my god and I came up with something not that I discovered it I doubt I did but it inspired me to move on from here I don't know if someone did it I don't know if someone's posted a tutorial but just by making my own mistakes that's what I came up with so I'm gonna call this I don't know resin and layering stamping or something. I'll say something like that. So once these dry, I'll add probably my final layer of resin. Um, hang on, let me wipe off my stamp real quick. So this will probably be my final layer of stamping on these. I'll add a layer of resin to seal it all in. once they're dry. And then I am going to resin the sides, which I'll show you so none of that ink comes off. Um, I did that. Did I do that? See, I did that on this. So it's nice and smooth. And then I also resin the back. And I'll show you that as well. So let me let this dry. Um, and actually, probably before I resin the top, I'll do this side. So let me let it dry. And then I'll come back and show you how I resin the sides, how I do it. Um, and then, then I'll do the top, just in case I get a little resin on the top. Then the top layer will actually make it look cohesive. Um, what's that? Oh, it's down in there. Okay. Oh, I'm loving these guys. I'm loving these. I hope you're loving them, because I am absolutely loving them. I think they look amazing. I really do. I'm blown, I'm blown away with myself. <laughs> Pat myself on the back. <laughs> Quite happy with myself at the moment. <laughs> okay, anyways. They're probably pretty dry. Okay, so actually, let me get my resin out, and I'll just show you how I did the sides. So when I've been resing, I was like, well, why can't I use, instead of a toothpick, why can't I use my silicone brush? Sorry, it just changed files. When I get to 30 minutes, it changes to a new file, so you might have a glitch there for a second. So I use a silicone brush. Any silicone brush would work. I have a little in a box here, so it doesn't get any light. I have a little uh, one of these cups. And that's just to pour the resin on the back here. Now this resin is probably getting a little old, so I'm just going to wipe it off. So I can get some new fresh stuff. Dry it off. Okay. And then let me unstick, this is the first one I did, so let me do this one because this is going to be the driest. Unstick it from my tile. Get my resining mat down. And again, these are on my Amazon Ambassador page. This is just cut up here. It's just on a little piece of foam. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pour a little resin right on this thing here. Okay, I'm going to take my silicone brush and... brush it on like this and that way when I'm wearing this because I'm going to be wearing this unless someone wants it and then buys it from me um, this ink on the side will also stay on and I did ink the backs like I showed you in the first tutorial I also did the backs so they're just cohesive so I'm just kind of spreading a thin layer on 
couple times I've had to do two coats of this. It's a very thin coat, so it'll just take, you know, a minute or two to cure. Um, and if it's not crazy smooth, I'll do another little thin layer. But this is like the fourth time I've done this, and I've gotten better at it. And so last time it was like really crazy smooth, so I didn't have to do another layer. The first time it was a little bumpy because I didn't put enough on. And I'm not putting a lot on, just a little bit on, because I don't want it to like flow over or drip anywhere. And I'm not going to torch it to get any bubbles out, because if there's a tiny little bubble, it's on the side. It's not going to bother me. And do this before you finish your front. That way, if you happen to get any on your front, you're going to do a final layer of resin. Like if you happen to go, oop. I got some on my front that won't be there, you know what I mean? Because you're going to do a layer of resin over that and you won't see that. And I'm going to show you how I've been getting rid of the distortion. Yeah, I'm going to resin the backs of these just because, again, there's ink on the... Oh, there's a hair. There's ink on the back and that will wear off over time. I don't want it to wear off on my clothing or whatever. So the back does need to be sealed, but you could use a regular sealer, like a paint-on sealer. That would probably be fine, which actually might be easier. Less risk of dripping onto your front, because if your resin drips on your front, you're going to have to do another coat. So maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll just paint the back with like a varnish. Okay, let me get this one on the light. in the light. I'm going to do this one because this one should be dry as well. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just paint these backs with like a layer of varnish um, because that's what happened to this other brown one is, if I can find it because my table's got stuff all over. I coated the front and it dripped onto the back so I ground it off and if I put another layer of resin on you wouldn't see it but then I'm afraid it'll drip onto the front. So and I don't really love that one, so I wasn't going to waste the resin on that one. If it was this one, I would. But I got a drip on that one, and it went right onto the back. And because there was a layer of resin on the back, it actually adhered to it. Whereas if the back was raw, it probably wouldn't have adhered to it if it was just clay. And I'm not very careful when it comes to my art. Like, for some reason, I'm very type A when it comes to most things in my life and when it comes to, um, like, oil painting and stuff. But when it comes to clay, for some reason, I feel the freedom to be able to just allow myself to play and experiment, which is kind of why I like the clay, doing polymer clay, because I feel less rigid with it. Whereas when I oil paint, I feel very rigid. And I have a hard time painting loosely. Most of my paintings are photorealistic type paintings. Unless the colors are fun, um, which isn't real life, but it's still more photorealism. Because that's just, I feel that rigidity when I oil paint. But with clay, I don't feel like I have to be as rigid. Oh, my finger stuck a little bit to the ink on the front. Okay, that should be good. Okay, I'm going to get that one in the light too. Okay, so now the sides are done. We have a nice little sheen to them. Now we got to seal up the front, okay? So I'm going to resin the front, and I'll probably do all of this in a fast-forwarded version. Um, I'm going to resin the front, and then I'll do a really thin layer on the back, and that will also get rid of this, this distortion or this warping that it does. Okay, and it'll also seal the resin on the back, or the ink on the back. 
So again, I will probably fast forward through it, but I'll put it on there. Are you guys ready to see these? Because I'm totally in love with them. And I hope on camera it shows up as cute as they are in person. Ready? Dun 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 dun! And I resin the back. So the back's all nice and smooth. The sides are all nice and smooth. Everything's sealed in. I wish on camera it would show up how 3D this actually looks. Because in real life, it does totally look 3D because there's different layers of resin in between each of the stampings. I love it. And this one's super cute too. Like in real life you can actually see down in there in between them, I wish it would really show up, but camera, you know. I love them. I'm totally, totally thrilled with them. This is my hot cocoa. It's like high 40s right now. It's, I don't know, 7.30 on Sunday night, and it's like in the high 40s, and I'm freezing. So in Vermont, we have this chocolate company called Lake Champlain Chocolates, and they make really, same as Ben and Jerry's, is originated in Vermont. Um, they make amazing hot cocoa mixes, and that's what I have with some marshmallows. So we're going to finish these off with our drill, and I have my smallest bit in. This is the pin drill. This is on my Amazon. It's a pretty cheap one. Um, the base spins, and that way, again, like I tell you usually, that way you can put it in your palm, and you can twist your fingers and you don't have to actually spin your hand. Generally I start with my smallest bit and work up to my largest bit and that way um, it keeps them from chipping. Now normally I'll do smallest bit, smallest bit, change it, larger, larger, change it, bigger, bigger, you know what I mean? I don't do one at a time all the way through, I kind of do them both at the same time. Now, for one like this, it's easy to find the center, but for one like this that I'm going to hang squarely, it's kind of hard to find the center. So what I tend to do is use a permanent marker and dot where I want the center first. And again, this one's finished on the back as well. And the sides are all resined, so this ink is not going to come off on any of my clothing. So let's see here. 
Because mm. you can clean this off with some alcohol after. No, maybe a little bit over. Here a little more. Yeah, I think I'll do more like that. Doesn't need to be exact, but close. And then what I'll do is I'll make like a little tick mark in it. Maybe in between the two. Let's do a little try to get in between the two. Make a little scuff mark and that way then I can take sweat wipe still wet. No, nope. I'll take a little alcohol, 70%. Just the regular rubbing alcohol from the store and just wipe that off because I already got a mark in it now. Okay, and then, yeah, that's about center. Yeah, so then usually, now this has quite a few layers of resin on it now. So it's going to take a little bit more to get through it. So usually I drill when it's flat on the table, but you can't really see me drilling when it's like that. So I'll hold it up in the air. And it actually goes through pretty easy. So I'm going to drill through, generally until I can see it pushing through the back, especially since I have resin on the back. I'll show you in a second. Hang on, let me get it to where I can see it coming through the clay on the back side and the resin. Okay, so you'll see. Can you see the drill bit right there? So then what I'll do is make a little tick mark there by pushing down. And I'll go from this side and watch your fingers because it will only take a second see, to get through. And these little ones can actually puncture you kind of like a needlewood or something sharp wood. And then just clean it up a couple times. Okay, so there's one hole. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. which I had already made like a little tick mark. I don't know what to call it, an indentation. And this shouldn't really take that long. So like I said, I usually do them both at the same time or however many I'm drilling with the same size ones. Okay, I can see it on the back now. out on the front, I'll push down, make a little indent, and that way it guides me, I can set the bit right in there, because sometimes when I didn't used to make a little impression with the tip first, sometimes the drill bit can actually slide up the piece. You'll be like twisting and it'll be like actually just moving up the piece and not actually twisting in. I don't know why. Okay, and then I'll just change it. I love this drill bit because it's really easy to change it. And I go slower when I'm on camera than when I do myself. Because again, most of my videos are for beginners. I'm hoping to help. Or, I don't know, just help. Um, and again... You know, some people say, oh, your videos are too long. Well, if I cut something out that I don't think is important, someone may need it. And if you don't need it, you can always, if you're on a cell phone or a touch screen, you can double tap the right side of your screen twice and it'll speed up 10 seconds. And you can keep double tapping your screen. And if you, um, or if you hit the three dots on the top part, I think it's the upper right hand corner of the video. If you hit those three dots, there's a section that says playback speed. You can always make the playback speed faster and speed up the video. I'll probably sound like a Alvin and the Chipmunks because he'll speed me up, but that's okay. But if I take it out, then the people who actually need it and wanted to see that can't. No matter how much they slow things down, 
if I cut out a section, they can't see it. So I'd rather not cut anything out because it may be the part someone's struggling with and it may seem like something simple to someone who's experienced. So always feel free to fast forward. Okay, up to my last size. Usually once I get to my really biggest size, I go really slow. I'm not really pushing, I'm just letting the bit do its thing. I'm freezing tonight. I have a hoodie on and my bathrobe on. Both the hoods are over my head. I have sweatpants on. Now I'm drinking my hot cocoa, so hopefully it'll warm me up. I kind of did this one pretty close to the edge, didn't I? Let me go through on this side a little bit, too. And I don't need to twist all the way and down until the shank, but I'm going to just to make sure the hole's nice and clean. Do a few twists in and out. See, but now we have a nice clean hole there. And a nice clean hole there. Okay, so then I need to decide on what colors I'm going to do for jump rings and bales. And I think I'm honestly probably going to do silver on both because this is a nice, pretty one. And I think silver would look, I wear a lot of silver. So I think I'd prefer silver on both feet. So here are my silvers. And I think I'm going to try to fit a 6 millimeter jump ring. Now sometimes if it's too thick, 6 millimeter won't work, but we'll try it and see. Because the U-shape, if it's really skinny and your pendant's too fat, it won't fit in. You know, um, if you're looking at this right here, your pendant's got to be able to sit in between that. So the fatter your pendant it is, the fatter the jump ring or the bigger the jump ring will have to be. So the opening's up there. I'm gonna grab it with my bent. These are um, these are on my Amazon because I love these. These fit perfectly in my hand. They spring back nicely. They're not hard to squeeze. I have some that are just too big, and then they're really wide and they're hard for me to grip. So these I love these. I actually bought a set at the craft store, and then I liked them so much I bought another one. So when you're opening, you don't want to be pulling apart. You want to be twisting front to back. Okay. So we're gonna twist it to open. I'm going to see if it will fit in. Oop, oop, oop. Don't fall. Oh, it hit the floor. Okay, wait, let me do that again. Boop. Okay. And then I need to get a bail. And for this shape, I usually like one of these round ones here. For some reason. I don't know why I like that, but I do. Oh, and I have a butterfly one. It's like a butterfly. Let's use that one. Why won't things just stay on for me? Are my hands just too cold tonight? It's time for bed. How about that? No, it's not. It's only 7.30. See if I can grip it somehow. Now all we gotta do is twist again front to back to close. Now one is a little taller than the other, so then I'll pinch it. I mean they can't all be perfect. So there's one. Let me see if I can find my jump ring on the floor that I already opened. Yep, found it. Found it. Let's see for this one if this one will fit this one too. These are the same thickness clays. I think my initial clay was a setting two on my post in my atlas, but it also has a lot of layer. A lot of resin on it so it's a little thicker 
And let's see, what do we want to do for this one? Should we do like a little, little one? Big one? No, not a big one. A round one? I don't want a big one. I think a big one's just too much. I want the focal to be on it. Let's just do one of these. I have a lot of those, so let's do one of those. <clears throat> this was the one I opened and that we dropped, so again, I'm going to grab it. Grab the other side. And twist to close. Okay. Get my fingerprints off them. put it on a chain just to take a picture of it so that's my vit, um, my picture my thumbnail picture I'll put them on a chain there's one front and back and you saw me when I did the back I did the thinnest layer I possibly could do and then let me wipe this one up get my fingerprints off this one too Here's that one. I love them. Front and back. I love them. I really do. I love this. And you know, it definitely looks different than say this one we did. You know, or even this one that we did with the same backings but the just by stamping a little differently. I really like this one. I really like the depth of it. I really like this one too. I like them all. Gives me different options to wear. Different colors of outfits, that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I, I'd love to see what you come up with. Please post it on my Facebook page and you do all the time and I love that. Um, I really do love this technique, and I think I'm going to even play with it more myself. So I don't usually do things more than once a lot of times. Um, but I do think I'll be playing more with this. I definitely will. So anyways, if this tutorial was helpful for you, um, or inspirational for you, please like, share, comment, ask me any questions. Um, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see... If you want to be notified for any upcoming videos, definitely subscribe. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Definitely join my Polymer Clay Facebook group because um, we have a great group. We share a lot. Everybody's awesome in the group, and we're all everybody's very kind. And so, um, if you hit the search, like the magnifying glass on Facebook and you search groups, it's Katie's, K-A-T-I-E, apostrophe S, Polymer Clay Friends. Katie's Polymer Clay Friends. That's my Facebook page name. Um, and yeah, we have a great group, and I have a tab on there asking people to post where they're from, the city and state, and that way maybe you guys can connect with people in your own states. You know, obviously if you're a few hours away, away you're not going to be able to see each other often, but... Even every, you know, a couple times a year get together and have some fun. I mean, I, I found a lady in Vermont that I've met up with twice now. Um, so, hopefully it's bringing people together. That's, that's my goal of that one there. So, please definitely look through there. Don't just pose where you're from, but look through there. I think I have like 80 or more responses on there. So, definitely. We have like 800 people in my group so far. So, anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Later.